victorious Betty Page. Along with her indie and feature film work, she has also done television work, including the Showtime's The L Word, where she was a story editor and a recurring character on the show. Uh, Turner has continued to work since 1994. She is really a working woman's actress. She has never, she's been unfledging and ambitious. Um, I think that you will be pleased and delighted to hear her speak of her experiences. She's currently fundraising for a film called Creeps, which is an independent feature once again. It is my, my great delight to introduce to you. Me. <laughs> Why are you doing that to me? Did you not say my name? Oh, oh come on out. Guinevere Turner. <laughs> yeah. Hi. And my, and my mic is on. Yeah, you guys can hear me. Yeah. Okay. I'll take that as a thumbs up. Hi, Deb. Hi, Gwen. Oh, we have a clip reel? Yeah, we do. Oh, my God, I love clip reels. Yeah, well, But I have you know. to stand back and look at it. Okay. Oh, I might have to, too. <laughs> Does it not have sound? Is this the trailer for the movie? Yeah. This is the official trailer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is hope. Are you hoping for sound? Yeah. <laughs> there will be sound. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> it was mostly just music. <laughs> Are we done? movie is it? I swear it's going to get all fascinating from here. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> That's my yeah. high school yearbook picture. <laughs> I'm not going to look. And that took some getting too. Let me tell you. Oh, is that from Dover High? Yeah. Oh god. Are you sure? I'm going to get a little music now.
she's seeing her detective. She's seeing what's over there, and she's getting the nails. And so Esther's putting the nails for her. And she's like, okay, what kind of work do these nails have? I just hope this isn't going to be one of those unrequited love stories. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. It's loud. What would you like to know? Oh, I've got a lot of things I want to know. <laughs> well, the first thing I was going to ask, um, you know, say to you is that, you know, today is throwback um, Thursday, but you've already seen the... That you dug up my high school yearbook photo? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> actually, so that was actually a local historian in Dover that actually was uh, able to do that, a friend of ours, Stan Schoomaker, in the Dover Museum. Really? Yeah. So he was able to... Well, there you are. I'm projected on the curtain. You're kind of a little wrinkly, though, not in person, <laughs> but... Oh my. Okay, well anyway, it's a throwback and you're not wrinkly in real, in real life, so. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your New Jersey roots. Like how did you come to go to Dover High School, for instance? Um, my mom grew up in Dover um, and my grandmother was also here, there. And um, so I lived with a while for my grandmother with my grandmother and went to Dover High for about nine months. Coincidentally, my mom was pregnant with my sister who's sitting right there. Uh, and I was gone for nine months and then when I came back I had a little sister and everybody, I think everybody in my high school in New York thought that I'd actually gone away to have a child. They were like, oh yeah, you have a little sister now that you've been gone oh, for nine oh, months. Oh, I love that. But I really, she really isn't my child. <laughs> High drama. You sure it's your little sister? Sure yeah. it is, yeah. Oh my God, that's funny. Um, I understand that you attended Sarah Lawrence. I did. Uh, where you studied fiction, is, is that right? Fiction? Yeah, fiction writing and philosophy and literature. And when did you realize that you wanted to make a film? Not in college. I didn't study film in college. I didn't, I'm, I'm back to, I've never studied the two things I do for a living, which is screen, screenwriting and acting. I've never taken a class in either, which is weird. Um, I'm funny, ironic, not what I expected out of my life. Um, we decided to make a film, we being me and the director, Rose Trochet of Go Fish, uh, in 92. 
Uh, so I'd already been out of college for two years or one year. Um, and she, she, had a, she had just gotten out of film school. And I was like, yeah, let's make a lesbian movie. Um, and, and she's like, well, how do, we don't know how to write a screenplay. I'm like, how hard can it be? People walk into a room, they say stuff, and they walk out. Which is funny, because it's, it's kind of what Scovish is like. It's a little more complicated than that. Um, uh, so, yeah, and so we just we decided, let's we were just going to make a short film, but then we it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, did you ever think that Go Fish would go to Sundance? Did you ever think it would get it would get that far when you made it? Not even a little. I remember Rose was showing me a copy of Entertainment Weekly, and she's like, "Look at all these people. These these are people who are at Sundance." And I was like, "What's a film festival?" Wow. <laughs> wow. I was like, "What's Sundance?" She's like, "It's a film festival." And I'm like, "What's a film festival?" I didn't really just knew it just was not my world. Wow. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we made a promise to each other. If we get invited to any film festivals, we have to make them take us both. Cut to, we're like in Spain and Japan, oh, wow. and you know, we were just all over the world in the space of you know, a year of finishing the movie. It was pretty um, amazing and mind blowing. And even though we hated each other because we were girlfriends when we made the movie and then we broke up in the middle of it. Ouch. Yeah, it sucked, Ooh, especially yeah. because the, our apartment together was, was a, one of the sets. Um, so she moved out, but she couldn't take any of her stuff because it had already been sh some of it had already been shot. So oh, no. I would come home from my day job. She would be setting up for us to shoot, and we would just be barely speaking to each other. Oh. If you watch the, the dailies uh, from, from Go Fish, because you know my character's all happy-go-lucky and smiley, it'll, she'll just go, and cut, and I'm like, how was that? <laughs> just oh, everybody my. was like super tense on this set one time. Uh, she, there was, it's a scene that I'm not in, but I was there, obviously, because I was producing the film, too. Um, and she, she would just change the dialogue of, in a scene that I had written just to piss me off. Oh. And so I was like, Rose, what, like, what, don't change that. That sounds stupid. Don't let her say that. Say it the way I wrote it. And, and she was like, I'm the director, so I can do whatever I want. And I was like, well, then what am I doing here? She goes, I don't know. <gasps> It was like yeah. that, and everyone was like, oh, yeah. ooh, ooh, burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm nervous already. Jesus, um, but then, I wasn't even there. But it's amazing what uh, <clears throat> success, unexpected success can do to a relationship, because we, we were just, we were forced together all the time, and we would fight, but we eventually were just like, wow, look what's happening to us. We just never in a million years thought that this little movie and this little idea would take us to all the places it has taken yeah, us. Yeah, and for each of you, you've yeah. both really gone... Yeah. Miles past that. Yeah. She just produced her first film, too, a film called Concussion. Oh, I saw that. Um, yeah, so it was, a, it was a really unexpected, exciting ride. And the thing is, well, I always laugh with her because as girlfriends, we were like, we want to do something big. I was like, she kind of wanted to move to Puerto Rico. She's Puerto Rican. <clears throat> and I, and I kind of wanted to make a movie, but I thought maybe we could move to Puerto Rico. And we really just were like, should we move to Puerto Rico and make a movie? Wow, did we make the right choice? <laughs> yeah. Imagine if we had just moved to Puerto Rico and then broken up in Puerto Rico. <laughs> well, the, it would have been nice in Puerto Rico, at least. It <laughs> yeah. wouldn't have been like you know, grimacing at one another. <laughs> um, do you think that if Go Fish were released in 2014, if it would have the same impact that it had? in 1994. No, nobody would care. That's the funny thing about it. Now it's just like, yeah, yeah, lesbians. To what, tell me something I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like there's lesbians on TV and there's, you know, right, there, right. You know there's gay, gay men and lesbians and, you know, in film and TV and in a way that if you had told me that was going to be the case in 1994, I would have been like, wow. I mean, like there's actually a show on ABC Family called The Fosters oh, and yeah. as a lesbian mm -hmm. couple. And I watched an episode and I was like, hmm, that's interesting, but I don't, ha I don't feel like I have to watch it. Right. Whereas, you know, even 10 years ago, I'd be like, there's lesbians on TV. I'm going to watch every second of it. Now I'm like, I can actually choose to just be like, good for you. It's not really, it's kind of too vanilla for me, but I'm glad it's on TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I feel like also because when Go Fish came out, independent film was a relatively new concept, you know, like everybody was always bragging about, you know, we made this movie for only two cents and, and everybody was just really into that. So we just, we just hit it at a moment where people were, and, I, and we, there was, had never been a movie, a lesbian movie about a group of friends. It was always sort of an isolated woman on her journey. Right. Um, and so that was also, it was like we made an anthropological film for people. They were just like, oh, that's how they act. 
And that's what they, that's it. It's like, yeah, just like regular old stupid people, you know, yeah. <laughs> with our stupid dramas. Like, yeah. nothing, nothing's actually all that different. Um, but, and, and I think it was an interesting journey for us after the film came out and what our careers are going to be because people kind of treated us like we made a documentary. And that, you know, that was, a, that was our thing. It like, had that kind of a feel to it, though. But it really was a completely scripted. Um, and those people weren't necessarily our friends. Everybody in the movie. I was going to say, how did you cast the film? Where did you find the people? Well, one, the, the woman who plays opposite me, V.S., uh, is a good friend, was mm -hmm. a good friend. And then we, <laughs> we used, like, one of the characters, the character Daria, she was a waitress. That, that actor was a waitress. And we were sort of like, we, we want her to be in our movie. We were like, is she gay? And we're like, oh, of course she's gay. We're like, but what if she's not? She gets offended. We're like, do you want to come be in our lesbian movie? You're a lesbian, right? Um, <laughs> and she was. So we just sort of did that. We would go out a lot. And we, had, we would have fundraisers and just try to like, meet as many women as possible and, and get them on camera. There's actually an entire part of the movie that didn't make it into the movie, which is we just would interview women it, documentary style about their experiences of coming out or you know relationship dramas they'd had just about sort of the lesbian experience but then we ended up pulling it out because we just took it in a different direction it used to be a hybrid narrative and documentary and you wrote that great scene I love that scene where um, I, I believe the character is Daria who goes out and she has sex with a man and then there's that sequence with the, the bride and all of the all of the women judging her mm -hmm. is such a great scene. It was an interesting thing because I, it was my idea to <clears throat> to uh, have a scene where you know a woman who considers herself a lesbian just goes out and has a one night stand with a man. I just thought that's an interesting thing that happens and people don't really talk about it in our community. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the half the crew threatened to quit. It was all women, all lesbians. They were like, if that scene really? goes in the movie, I'm quitting. I'm not, I'm, you know, gonna, and I'm like, see, now that really means we had to keep it in because look what it's, it's pushing buttons with people and causing controversy. And it's the number of times after screenings of that movie that someone would come up to me and say, I had a one night stand with a man and then none of my friends would talk to me and they said I wasn't a lesbian anymore and <laughs> I got isolated by that. I'm like, see, just one night and all of a sudden your entire identity comes into question. And I thought it was really interesting. A lot of women really um, connected to that. So it was drama, because we also, you know, part of us was like, well, this is, you know, it's maybe it's too advanced for some people to understand, but then we're like, F it. Yeah, well, I think that that's very true. I think if you're, if you're not a lesbian yourself and you're not getting you're not getting criticism in the way that this character did, it would be hard to understand it because people are so into sort of uh, pigeonholing you. You say, you say you're this, so behave like that. And if you don't, then you're outcasted in the community. But so it's so, I feel like it's a new generation. Is, it's so much more fluid and so much um, less um, attached to labels than that way, I think, which I think is very cool. But, but back to your question, I really think that if Go Fish came out now, everyone would be, it would be a blip. It would be insignificant, which is just a, is a good thing because it means that we have made a lot of progress in terms of gay lesbian representation in film and TV. And do you think in films today, 2014, there is an equal amount of representation for lesbians in film? Do you see, do you see that now? Well, what's crazy and what is game changing is the internet. <laughs> Because there are, the number of lesbian web series that there are is insane. You can't even keep up. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like there, if you spent all day, you couldn't watch a piece of every single lesbian that's out there being represented in TV, and, but in, in particular in web series. Wow. Um, it's, it's crazy. I feel like lesbians are particularly obsessed with making web series of themselves. Well, wow, that's pretty <laughs> weird. Wow. Which is cool. Yeah, I mean, if the, I mean it's completely accessible, right? I'm about to actually be in a web series called Les Be Friends. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're shooting it in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I get to, for once, I'm, my character is not, I always get, I, no matter what, whoever I play, it's always a nightmare of some kind. Oh, no. um, and this woman is a nightmare, but she's at least not a slutty nightmare. She's an uptight nightmare. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so she's very, you know, just... Yeah, I, 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 I have to see that because I can't even imagine... <laughs> of me just being tightly wound and, yeah. you know, like, all um, type A, control freak. I kind of, there's a part of me that's like that. Wow. I mean, in the L word, you played pretty much, you A nightmare. Know. Slut. 
and well, well, that and 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 pretty, um, pretty nasty, right? I mean, oh yeah, she's a bad lady. Yeah, she's like, yeah. Gabby Devoe, the character I put on the L word, uh, was um, she was our first uh, real villain. On the show, mm -hmm. after the villains then piled up, but like, but, but my character was the first one who'd just be like, she is no good. She was no good, but she couldn't stop watching it. It was but, really fun to play. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure. I'm, I'm just like sure. it was just like a more nightmarish version of me. Oh, and this new thing is more nightmarish. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying oh. that Gabby Devoe was just like oh. playing a more nightmarish version of myself. And in the L word, um, when you were writing the series, which character did you like to, to, which character did you like writing the most? Which? I loved writing for um, Leisha Haley, who plays, um, played uh, Alice, because Leisha would, no matter what I would write, she would make it funnier when, she, when it came out of her mouth. Like, mm -hmm. it was just always, you just always knew that Leisha was gonna make it look good. Um, and also Aaron Daniels, who played uh, Dana, Mm -hmm. um, was really fun to write work. She has sort of, sort of flawless um, comic timing. Mm -hmm. And then they killed her. They killed her. <laughs> I, was just, I, I, wasn't, I didn't work on the show when they killed her, but I was shocked that that's the character they... We were like, I lead to the creator of the show, everyone hates the Jenny character. Oh, God, yeah. Just kill her. And, and, and then was the like, end, they oh, Jenny is the star of the show. She's the main character. She's the center of the whole thing. And we're like, oh, maybe Jenny's you. Sorry, we just told you everybody hates you. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny, you've got to go. And then in the end, she did, and no, nobody knew who killed her, right? Is that what happened? I stopped watching after. Yeah, I, I think so. I think it was like, yeah, I think it was one of those deals where it was like, who killed Jenny Schechter? And right. Oh, yeah, I remember hearing about that. It was, it was great after I didn't work on the show, because then people would come up to me, season three, season four, why is Beth blah, blah, blah? I don't, I'm like, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I don't work on it. Nope. I just... <laughs> I haven't even seen, I'm actually, she brought back my character for season six for one episode. I actually haven't uh, um, seen it. I met this woman once who said, I'm never telling anyone anything about my life and my relationships again because every time I tell somebody a story, it's on the L word the next season. Oh my God. I was like, come on, that just means that you're, there's only 12 stories to tell. No one's copying you, it's stealing your life. Yeah. Oh my God. You're just like every other lesbian. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't pat yourself on the back too yeah. much. Yeah. It's my story. Oh, yeah, it's my story. I'm <laughs> sticking to it. Uh, your work on American Psycho. Now, this must have been very controversial because of you know the content of the movie. But what I wanted to ask you is, how did you come to auditioning? Chris, how did Christian Bale get involved in, in the film? I mean, it's the Brett Easton Ellis novel, mm -hmm. and I mean, that must have been when you and Mary Harron got together to make a film out of it. What was it like adapting from the novel into film? There must have been so much you had to take out. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if anyone in this room has read the book, but it is, to use a California term, gnarly. Um, it is so, so epically violent and disgusting and so epically sexual that turns into violence. It's a, it's a really disturbing book. Mm -hmm. um, and we, and I, you know, I'm little known fact about me is I hate scary movies and I hate scary things. I never, I never would watch this movie if I, if I would, didn't make it. Um, and Mary Heron knew that about me, but she said, you know, you have to read this book and I think we can make a really great movie out of it. And I was, I was reading like, oh my God, what the? And, yeah. <laughs> um, but I saw what she meant. Uh, and so we, we, we spent, we just, we really just, let, we went to this place in Mexico and just spent like three weeks just going through the book, reading it to each other. We had, would have actor friends come down and visit us for a day or two and read passages and read, see how dialogue sounded. And, and then we would go to bed and wake up in the morning and say, what, which part of the book did you have a nightmare about last night? Because we were just creeping ourselves out because it's, yeah, well, it's yeah, so Yeah, well, yeah, it's a rough. pretty creepy book. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty creepy. Um, but, you know, it, and, and uh, it's been an interesting journey with that. So it's been 10 years since that movie came out. and More than that, 13 years or something like that. Um, and people, to, to this day, women will come up to me and say, you know, I thought that was just a going to be just a horrible slasher movie, but I, fi I finally watched it, and it's actually a really smart feminist movie. And I'm always like, but just to be clear, for, so for the last 12 years, you thought I was a total sellout and was just writing slasher movies, and now you realize that. Now you've turned, yeah. around, turned it around. But it's kind of amazing to me. I think a lot of women in particular um, it just judged it the way, the, I mean, if Gloria Steinem says that American Psycho is a bad book, but it's going to be a bad movie, and we don't care who made it. 
I mean, you, if you had told, because Gloria, Gloria Steinem famously, the mother of feminism, in case anyone doesn't know that, um, famously took Leonardo DiCaprio's side. He was supposed to play the lead um, oh, really? and told and said, you can't do this. You're going, you know, you just came off Titanic. 13-year-old go girls have posters of you on their walls. Like, you can't go r directly into this misogynist, nightmarish movie. And so, and so Leo quit. Just confusingly enough, Gloria Steinem ended up marrying Christian Bale's father. But is that <laughs> oh, come on? Yeah, for real. Yeah, until he died, he, t he died a couple years ago. But they were husband and wife. So, so Gloria Steinem was actually Christian Bale's stepmother. Um, oh my god! But if you had told me when I was 19 that I was <clears throat> that I would be doing something in my 20s that Gloria Steinem would be speaking out against, I would have burst into tears. Like, where do I go wrong? Yeah, the I mother of feminism. Yeah. And I actually met her last year, and I was just excited to meet her. I mean, she's this iconic, important figure in women's history. And uh, my, so I just went and said hello. We were at some kind of reception. And the friend that I was with said, you know she wrote American Psycho, right? And I was like, oh, god, don't tell Gloria Steinem I wrote American Psycho. She's not going to like me. And she was like, oh, god. And she said, I think that the woman who directed that movie must have been molested as a child. Oh, no. Come That's on. That's what she said. I was like, shh, don't speak, Gloria. Shh, shh, shh. Just speak, oh, Gloria Steinem. Yeah, I was like, I, I didn't, I just changed the subject. I didn't wow, where did get that an argument. Come from? Yeah, I know. It was kind of a That's intense kind of a, thing to say. Yeah, it's yeah. a totally left thing. I was like, well, you know, obviously, you know she's my friend. So, anyway, that was a weird Gloria Steinem sidebar. But uh, we, Christian auditioned um, and. It was kind of a fascinating audition because he was just off a plane from England. He is English, um, which I think a lot of people don't know. Um, and he was all sort of rumpled, and he was he was pretty skinny, and he had the cute, crickety uh, British teeth. And and we were sort of like, wow, well, he's you know we knew him from some of his other work, but you know, can he pull out this? And he was gave such a great audition, and then he went about the business of completely transforming himself. He got his teeth made. He's like, I'm just going to copy the way my lawyer looks. He seems like the ultimate American dude to me. Oh I'm going to get my teeth done like him. I'm gonna, and he only spoke in his um, American accent <coughs> ever um, for the whole time we were shooting. Wow. Um, yeah, off and on camera. And he never socialized with anyone, but he was always um, exercising. He was, he was basically being Patrick Bateman, which was a little creepy because we all had to work with him. Yeah. Ooh. Um, and uh, he, just, he just completely transformed himself. He, he gave him, got himself that insane body um, and a perfect tan and perfect teeth and a flawless American accent. There's only one part in the whole movie where I can hear his British accent come out just a little bit. Wow. But he's a pretty much a scientist, that man. And what was it like to do that? I mean, you play Elizabeth, and you're, it's toward the end of the, end of the movie, right? Toward the end? I don't know. Ish, yeah. I think. I can't remember. I haven't seen it in a while. And she's um, she's from she's from Sarah Lawrence yeah. too, right? That, yeah, the character that I play in in, uh, in American Psycho is from uh, it says uh, you know she goes to Sarah Lawrence and she's not a lesbian and blah blah blah. I actually when we were writing it the movie I said Mary I'm not writing another word unless you let me play this part, um, and so she did uh, and it was you know it's a uh, hard work to do a sex scene and then get killed. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, and that whole I mean, how did they actually? How many takes did it did it take to get that done? I mean, it, it mean, was really so. I had all of a sudden the blood like just. We both so we both had no. I had a packet of blood taped to my leg, under the covers. So it was our job, while while looking like we're struggling, for him to bite the blood packet and then for both of us to make sure that the blood seeped through the sheets while still acting and pretending that we're having a fight. It was really difficult. Um, first of all, because the first two times we did it, we just got blood all over ourselves and not oh, a drop God. on the sheets. We were like, oh, this, real, this is real American psycho, <laughs> yeah. real American psycho. Um, and uh, and then eventually uh, we got it right, but it was um, it was we what we freaked ourselves out because we were we just wanted to uh, look at playbacks because we had to struggle. We wanted to know how big the frame was, and but we were just laughing and talking. He's standing there completely naked in a pair of sneakers. That's funny you know, all in foot in and of itself, and. Um, and then we, wa we watched the playback and we were like, oh, this is actually not funny to anyone but us. It's actually really scary, this scene that we're well, shooting. It is really scary to see it. it I've I brought a friend to a test screening and he, he liked the movie, but he said, in the future, I think it's really, it's just good manners to tell someone if you're going to get brutally murdered in a movie before they see it. Yeah, let them know before I'm like, they but know. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> The filmmaker in me wants you to be surprised, but I don't want you to know that I die at the end of the scene. It ruins it. 
I mean, it was great. It was, a, I mean, it was completely horrific, but it was a really, really great scene. So it was fun to do. Um, the other question I have for you about American Psycho is, did you see it as an allegory or as a social satire on the 80s and 90s, the Wall, world of Wall Street? Yeah, that was the idea, sort of um, a satire about 80s consumer culture, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that's what Brett was going for with the book. Um, and we tried to stay true to that. Um, I just, I mean, our, our conscious choice was to have a, um, v v most of the violence take place off screen, except for the one scene where he chases her with a chainsaw. We're like, we gotta go one classic horror movie. Yeah, that was pretty scene. classic. Yeah. yeah, and then, uh, and then other than that, it's sort of just about to happen or it just happened. Um, just, you know, because then your imagination, you know, he just opens up that drawer full of gnarly looking tools and that's the end of the scene. Yeah, and that's the end of the Yeah. Day. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I just going to say? Oh, the actress um, who gets chased with the chainsaw. Every time I see it, even in the trailer, I just think of her. She, I wasn't there that day when they were shooting that. And she said just the experience of running down a hall screaming uh, was so traumatic to her. She just felt like really. Um, emotional about it and you know everybody the crew is just like doing their job and whatever and she's like I had to spend most of my day running around in my underwear screaming and banging on doors I was like oh that sounds hard yeah that's pretty intense <laughs> yeah. all day long doing that yeah and you know the other female characters like Reese Witherspoon she, who plays Bateman's um, girlfriend w was that a commentary on how women try to, uh, I don't know, um, assimilate themselves into this Wall Street culture, you know, the padded shoulders and the... It was more the women in, the, in American Psycho, to me, are just, they're just for men to have. Mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. they sort of like They're just, yeah, they're as good as having a nice car or the perfect business card and the, or the nice suit. It's like you have the, the perfect Reese Witherspoon looking blonde girlfriend and she's just one of your assets kind of thing. Yeah, so, it doesn't really matter what she says because... Right, it's it, just about how she looks and yeah. how appropriate she is and if, if other guys are jealous uh, of what you have. And, and I'll tell you, the business card scene, I think, is everybody's favorite. And it just came out recently that the word acquisitions is misspelled on the card, on Patrick Bateman's card. Oh, no. Oopie which the internet that. loved. Um, yeah, it's misspelled. Oh, no. Isn't that embarrassing? And there's a close-up of the card. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Not good for him. <laughs> totally. The production designer. <laughs> How was it working with Mary, Mary Harron? Um, it's great. We're very good friends, and we had already been working on our Betty Page film when we started doing American Psycho. And I'm lucky uh, to, to have her because not all writers get to be part of casting or be on the set and you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. chip into what you think or if, if that worked or if we should take go again like you know I'm, I'm really lucky to have her as a collaborator and we actually just collaborated on, on something new oh good um yeah and i was like wow there's you know finding someone that you can really work with and get great work done with it's like harder than finding a girlfriend like it's such an important relationship, and it's so changed, it's so informed my adult life, my relationship with her and our creative relationship. But even if you think someone is really talented, it doesn't necessarily mean you can sit across the table from them for eight hours right, and, exactly. and shoot each other's, embellish on each other's ideas or explain to each other why that's a terrible idea. Um, and not everybody, you know, some people just don't communicate well or get easily offended or, you know, are just don't don't work well with others i mean we just we have a great relationship like so that. you found it you found a, a wonderful collaborator yeah and we're, and, we're, and we're still going she was she her last movie was called the moth diaries um and she was oh yeah and she um and it just flopped and critics hated it and she was like i just it made me realize i'm so spoiled I've just, every time I make a movie, it's really successful. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And now she's like, it's like I'm surprised that it wasn't amazing. Um, and when actually she, a little known fact, she actually um, also directed the Anna Nicole Smith story for Lifetime. I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. I saw that, that actually. Too, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, that's her. That was, that's actually the last movie she did. Now, the notorious Betty Page, is it true, is this, this was just something that I had read, that you were, you were out somewhere and someone said, you look just like Betty Page. Is that true? Yeah, it was Mary. I mean, um, I, can, I, can, I, I can see that. 
but we were introduced, Mary and I were introduced to each other, and that was one of the first things she said is, you know, you look a lot like Betty Page. And I was like, who is Betty Page? I'd never even heard of Betty Page. Just like when she said, you should read this book, American Psycho. I'm like, what's this book? <laughs> until until what you were I screaming in horror in, <laughs> yeah. your, in your bed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, what was I just going to say about Betty? <laughs> what did you just ask me? Um, Sorry, I'm I just kind of spaced out today. I just asked you. Um, oh, about playing, Betty. About playing. Um, so I, so Mary and I started working together, and then my contract was my my. I was going to play Betty, and I was also, you know, obviously writing it. Um, but then I got too old. It took us a long time to. Uh, we were writing that for for a couple of years, and then we stopped and did American Psycho, and then we went back to it. And so by the time um, we were ready to shoot, uh, I was 34, 35. And um, you know, Betty has to be 18 in the movie, and I, you know, didn't. I, right, there was no way I was going to look 18. But if I had wanted to, I could have forced them to cast me um, contractually. And I think you could have pulled it off. I don't know. I, it was the thing was I, the filmmaker in me trumped the actress in me because I just thought, if it's me, then it's going to be a limited budget, and that means it's a period piece, and everyone's going to suffer, and everyone's going to be looking at me like this. Better be good because we're working for nothing. You better be amazing. But if it's not me and it's Gretchen Maul who played Betty Page, we can raise more money and you know we can do it properly. And so I just you know and then we were able to make it for about six million dollars and, and it and it looks pretty and sparkly and you believe the period you know period pieces are expensive. To get yeah, it right. the tra the trailer is really wonderful for the for the uh, for the film. It's yeah, really, it's it is really good. quite yeah, good. I love it. It's really good. Um, you are currently working on a film called Creeps. I'd like to know who the creeps are. The creeps are uh, two best friends, a gay man and a lesbian. Um, and the story is that they, um, her ex-girlfriend is having a big art opening and they want to go. And as you do when you go see, when you, sorry, see your ex, you want to look as good as possible. And so they decide that they're going to need to have really good skin uh, next week. And the only way that they can um, do that really is by not drinking or doing drugs. So they make a pact to not drink or do drugs, but they fail miserably. And then by the end of, by the time they get to the event, it's a complete friggin' disaster. Is it just like a hot mess? Yeah, it's, it's a good complete mess. And they just, you know, they are, they like they lie to each other about secretly, you know, having a drink. And they, you know, they are um, their friendship breaks up because you know everybody knew that the new girlfriend has an ex, uh, the ex girlfriend has a new girlfriend, but nobody told her. And so it's just all drama, but it all takes place in one week. And so, how far into the process are you with it now? Um, well, I did an Indiegogo campaign uh, in the f fall, winter, um, which is such a fascinating um, process. It is a really, like, to do it right, it's a f more than a full-time job. It's like a 24-7 job. I really commend you on that because, I, you know, I, I keep thinking, you know, you could, could have so easily gone back into some kind of, you know, feature film situation, but it seems like that you're always constantly giving back to your independent roots, which I think is really wonderful. It's sort of all I, it's all I know how to, it's how I know how to do it. I, don't, I wouldn't know how to do it any other way. Um, but, but, so no, but now I'm sort of in, stuck in a little bit of limbo because we raised $52,000, which I have to remind myself is a huge chunk of money. Um, but um, my goal was 200000 and that's when I needed to shoot the movie, so mm -hmm. now we're sort of stuck in. Um, are you still are you still raising? Are you still on Indiegogo? Um, no, it, it, that those campaigns are are always finite. Okay. Uh, but there's a website. Uh, it's Creeps the movie um, mm -hmm. where, you can, where people can donate if they want to. Uh, and we're thinking actually of turning it into a TV pilot because oh that would be great because yeah because it's, we do, we can make a half hour TV pilot for fifty two thousand dollars like Ab Fab like Ab Fab yeah it is it, is, it does have an Ab Fab vibe except to it. with. You know, um, yeah, a, a lesbian and a gay man. Yeah, <laughs> better hot messes. Like um, yeah, the, the other two are. Um, yeah, so we're thinking <clears throat> of doing that. I think we might actually do that um, because there's so much, there's so much opportunity for um, viewing now because of you know Amazon is a channel now. Do you remember when Amazon was a place where you got books, just actual books? I know. Um, Hulu is a, is a channel now. Netflix is a channel, obviously. Like it's a, it's a so there's a lot of exciting places for TV. And I think Netflix, because Netflix has Orange is the New Black, I think the other, its yeah. competitors are going to want something yep. that has homos. That's where I come in. <laughs> so it sounds like you have always got your little feelers right out there. Yeah, that's my job. I admire that. <laughs> I admire that a lot. And 
Speaking of that's your job, do you ever get time for just yourself? You seem like you're always on the go. It seems like you're always somewhere, you're doing something, you're promoting, you know, not even promoting just your own work, but from what I've read and what I've seen, um, you promote other people all the time and you fundraise for other people and you do all this work. I don't know how you find the hours in the day to do it, to be honest with you. I don't know. I'm usually in my pajamas till about two in the afternoon. Okay, Gwen, that just <laughs> blew my whole, my whole, no, no, I mean, unless I'm shooting something and then, you know, you're up at six and working your ass off all day, but, um, but, you know, I, I do get to have a lot of downtime, um, um, because I have to, I have to carve it out because I'm supposed to be on top of everything, a writer, and so I need to, um, sometimes just force myself for a few days to just do nothing but that. How many hours a day do you, do you write? Um, I mean, on a given including torture, self torture, I'd say okay. two or three. <laughs> you know, the self torture being, oh my god, I don't have any ideas. Oh my god, this is the worst idea. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm looking at Facebook when I'm supposed to be writing. You know, <laughs> oh my god, I'm such a bad person. I'm never going to have a career. Oh wait, I'm already 45. If I, if I don't have a career now, I never will. Like, you know, the downward spiral. Um, and then I write for about 20 minutes. <laughs> well, you know, all I can say about the Facebook thing is I don't want to hear anybody say anything about social media because. Our Guinevere Turner would not be here without that kind of connection. I oh, that, right, because that's how we met. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Facebook is fascinating that way. And you know, I have a little story for you, actually. Mm -hmm. um, probably seven years ago or so, I was ordering films. I had just started teaching a film class on campus, and I was, it was during the summer. And I, obviously, I had seen Go Fish, and I was looking for other films that you had done. And I researched frameline features, and I thought, okay, this is good. I'm going to find some things. So I found a lot of the shorts that were out then, and I was and that they were on VHS then. Mm. And I remember them coming to my apartment in Dover above a storefront, and I remember the mailman just giving them to me, like in this brown... You know, here's oh, like they were porn. Like they, like they were porn. Yeah, you know, you know, doing that kind of a thing. But there was, it was actually, it was the film Hummer. Mm. And every single time, it was three different times I got the film, and there was something wrong with it. So finally, I would have to send it back, send it back, and finally, I called Frameline, and I started talking to this nice woman on the other end of the phone. It was Dana Johnson, right? And the, there became a little bit of a joke about Gwen Turner. Well, maybe you're, you're just not supposed to have those films, you know? And, <laughs> I, you know, and it was a big joke about, yes, I'm, I'm you know, Chasing Amy was another, uh, one of Guinevere's, um, fil in one of her films. Um, so was that one not working either? No, that one was oh. fine. Yeah, that one was really fine. But the funny thing about it was there was one time when I called and Dana had put me on hold and then she, she said, I'll call you back. And she called me back and she said, well, you never guess who just sashayed in and out of here. Oh, did I sashay? I think you I did. did. Just, not just regular walking in yeah, the room. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you were still in the office. Oh, really? Yeah. And... Sashaying around the office. Sashay, yes. <laughs> and, and she actually, I could hear you. I could hear you in the background. And I thought, oh my God, I was in my, uh, in my office in the, you know, the CH building just thinking like, oh my God, Gwyneth Turner is right there. <laughs> and so she's talking to you Well, she's telling you about how I'm not getting the tapes and the whole thing. And I don't know if you remember this, but you got on the phone. I did? Yeah, for like three seconds. And you were like... Oh, well, I'll make sure that you get, you get the shorts, really. Did I? Yeah, and you made, yeah. And I you, did. And you actually sent me, you sent me um, Hummer and another one. You sent me another one. Wow, that was nice of me. So that was nice <laughs> of you, and I never got a that chance. And uncharacteristically organized and, and following through on what uh, I yeah, said. Yeah, well, I, you know, and I never <laughs> got a chance to, you know, I was probably like 75 shades of red on the other phone, but I never got, you know, I, other side of the phone, but I never really got a chance to thank you. So You're welcome. I am thanking you now. <laughs> um, so what advice do you have for students, 
women that are interested in going into filmmaking. Mm. Is film school the, the way? Is that the, the sure I mean, way to go? Everybody's or? path is different. It kind of depends. I mean, I, I didn't go to film school. Uh, there's also a world of stuff I don't know. Um, and I'm, is that where the shorts help you? Yeah, that's like, that feels like film shorts? school. Yeah, I mean, you, it's an expensive way to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you make a mistake, it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's my money and it's my mind to, to mess up. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, I'm, and I've just learned from being on sets as an actor and just, I always, I'm always watching what the director's doing and how things work and, mm -hmm. you know, what, how do you get certain things out of certain actors. It's my favorite part is working with actors. Um, and I've worked with a lot of non-actors, which is interesting because basically you just have to trick them. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so I hate when people try to trick me as an actor to get a response out of me, but sometimes sometimes the smartest thing to do is not, is, I think a lot of people, especially non-actors, they freeze at the word action, because you know, you're on a set, it's hustle, bustle, mm -hmm. hustle, bustle, and then it's all action and everybody's quiet and looking at you, and then they get, people get flustered, so I often um, call cut but tell the DP to keep rolling and just see if I can get them to be natural. That's got to be a very hard job. It is, but it's fun because it's when it's good. When when you finally get the person to do, I remember I was I was working on my short Hummer actually, and my, the woman who plays opposite me was just so nervous, but she was so cute. I just really wanted her to be in my movie, but she was so nervous. And I'm the, especially in the beginning of the day, and, she, and um, I said, Trish, by the end of the day, you're going to be so exhausted. You'll do anything just to get out of here. So just think of it now. Just be exhausted. Just throw it away. Like just don't care because. Otherwise, we're just going to be here. And, and then at one point, there's a, there's a shot where she's supposed to be looking at me, my character lovingly while I'm not aware of it. And she just, she just couldn't do it. <laughs> and um, my, my script supervisor, who's Jamie Babbitt, that, the director, she just goes, she's Angelina Jolie. And, and the actress face, the, she, her face totally lit up. And oh, that's wow. the shot that's in the movie. I'm like, I guess I'm not hot enough for that, but she, would, she took it all the way to Angelina. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's really good. Now, in terms of acting, um, do you, not that you prefer it, but do you see yourself doing act, more acting in the future? I would be doing so much more acting than I am now if I had the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to. I, I was, so I'm in this movie called Who's Afraid of Vagina Wolf. Mm -hmm. um, for real. Is uh, that DVD yet? No, it's going to be out on um, Amazon and Netflix, but not until June or July. Oh, um, and so uh, I had a lot. Of, so this is this is a movie that I'm in where it's about a group of women trying to make an all-female cast movie of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, the famous Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton movie, and I play the character who's playing Elizabeth Taylor. Um, which was so incredibly fun because oh, I'm sh I especially that in that role. Yeah, I would I would say the director. Just so you know, I'm not playing a good actress. I'm just playing an actress who's playing this part. So basically, that that just meant I had an excuse to just n nothing was too over the top. So I'm just going nuts in that movie, being being uh, somebody who's doing you, a bad version. Are of Elizabeth you totally? Taylor. Are you totally Liz with her? You know, kind of swaggering. Oh and, yeah, just oh, like boy. Brah, just being yeah. a total yeah, just being a nightmare. Um, but it was really fun, and I actually Outfest, the, the LGBT festival in um, LA, gave me a, a Best Actress Award for, for my I performance. I saw that. Congratulations. Thank you. And so I'm hoping that awesome. because that'll give me that, that validation, and maybe I'll get more, more acting work, because I, I really love it so much. Um, and you know, it's just a known fact, as you, especially as you get older as a woman, it's just, there just aren't as many parts. And I just really want someone to write a part where I get to play a smart doctor or a courtroom lawyer or something. I, I, nobody's ever let me do that. I, I've been mo a mom a couple times this year, which has been interesting. Really? Mm hmm Yeah. Working with a five-year-old. I could sort of see you as the doctor, the lawyer. Oh, that's, thank you. I can, <laughs> that's what I want to do. I worked with a five-year-old this summer uh, who was playing my son, and the whole movie takes place at a wake. Um, and the... And the the person who's dead is my child, but there's my living child, and then there's my dead teenage daughter, and so we're we're supposed to be, you know, it's sad. And we're supposed to be really sad, and this kid would just be like cracking me up and like goofing around, and then uh -oh. just as soon as the director would call action, he would just go straight into funeral mode, and I was like, all right, Timmy, I don't, I can see you're a different kind of actor than me, but I need to focus on being sad, so stop <laughs> yeah, doing, stop. put that sock puppet away, and and with its French accent. And um, let me focus. And he was like, okay. But it was just, it's just funny, like completely different process as an actor. Like I actually had to be like, let me think of someone dead. 
Uh, let me think of how I'd feel if I had a dead child, you know, and he was just like, he was just a natural. He's gonna be famous, I think. Wow. They say John Travolta is like that. Oh, you mean when John Travolta was a, uh, was a boy? No, they oh. say that he is on a set, that he'll just be totally goofing around and, uh, you know, m making jokes and cracking jokes, and then when, it, when it's time, he just completely goes into the mode. He doesn't have to, he's not one of these high maintenance actors like me who has to actually prepare. Like just sit down and kind of like. Yeah, I mean, I, one of the actresses in, um, in um, Who's Afraid of Vagina Wolf is also, she was also, we were on the L Word together, Janina Govankar, and she's like that too. Drive me nuts because she'll always have her phone. Oh my God, look at this thing, guys. Oh my God, look at this YouTube video. Oh my God. I'm like, oh God. And then she'd be like, Whoosh. and then she's right there. It's just, it's just how some people are. They just know how to switch on and off like that. It's pretty co cool to watch, but it's actually really annoying to work with. So, when you, <laughs> so I bet you the night at the awards was wonderful. I it saw, was fun. I saw, some, I saw some of it. I saw some of it online, and it looked, it looked like you just, it was a great time. The, um, the, award, the <clears throat> Outfest Award? You mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was <laughs> the funny part about that was so somebody called me like 11:30 the night before. It was an it was a brunch actually, an awards brunch, and, th and said, um, "You're going to go to the brunch tomorrow, right?" And it was someone from the festival, and I was like, "Ooh, are they going to give me an award? Or they just want me to show up just to you know, whatever, because they know I wear a nice dress." Um, and uh, so then when I got there, I was like, "No, I'm not getting an award. They just wanted me to represent for the film." And then I realized that I was just about to get the award, but you know, in like 30 seconds, and I was like, oh my God, I really want to powder my nose. But if I powder my nose right now, oh everyone's gonna know, it's gonna look like I think I'm about to get an award. <laughs> so I can't. <laughs> so I like sort of took my napkin and was like, dabbing my face like this. I was really, it actually, I, 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 was, I, I was unexpectedly tongue-tied when I got the award, because I was, cause, because of the director who was sitting next to me and is a very dramatic person and a good friend, just immediately burst into tears. Oh no. <laughs> I was like, oh God, please, I have to actually get up and just like, oh my God. So, I was like, so it flustered me and I was sort of like, uh, uh, thank you. And I'm usually not at a loss for words. Well, before we, I give you to your audience, um, I would like you now to just think of me as, hang on. As what? <laughs> Oh, Angelina Jolie. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> is that, is thanks. that you're, you're giving me your best Angelina? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Guinevere Turner, yeah. I have a few questions for you. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to CCM's Actor Studio. Oh, that guy. <laughs> Can't you see it? Uh, oh, I, I'm oh, getting yeah. it. I'm getting You're going for the, okay, what's his yeah, name? For that, James yeah. Lipton? Yeah. <laughs> So, Guinevere, mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you had a profession other than your own, what would you attempt, like to attempt? I think I would make a very good lawyer. I can pretty much talk anyone into anything and out of anything, and I could spin anything to make it work for me. Okay, now I'm afraid. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay, that's all right, that's okay. I like it. So if you could, you know, if you'd like to attempt this, I don't see why some casting director can't make you a lawyer on regular television. I'm hoping that will happen. I'm trying to uh, conjure it and make sure that it does. I just really want to do a long dramatic court speech to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <laughs> yes, and I could actually and see... And if you think that this man is a criminal, you know, something like walking that. Walking back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Hang on a second. Hang on a second, Gwen. Okay. Let me get my let me get my questions. Oh no, here it is. Okay. What is your favorite curse word? I like so many of them. <laughs> a lady of letters and yet a lady with curse words. I like it. Um I try really hard not to curse. Because if I, 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 because I can just be so vulgar, um, but I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be a woman of letters who has, you know, more than one, one more than five words at her disposal. Um, but probably motherfucker. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. When someone compliments you either on your work or yourself, what line do you reply with? Just thank you. 
Or sometimes I just agree with them. If they're saying something like, you know, the movie's really good, and I, I, I agree, I say, I, I really like it too. It's hard, to, you know, to be gracious uh, and, you know, when, when people give me compliments, I think we all have experienced that when someone says something There's flattering. not another line that you've used. Why? Are you thinking of something in particular? Yes, I am, actually. Oh. What is it? Is it something I've said elsewhere? I'll, uh, yeah, I'll give you a hint. It's uh, from North by Northwest. Oh. Go ahead, say Lucky, it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, That's I do I say that for. sometimes, actually. How does a girl like you get to be a girl like you? Lucky, I guess. <laughs> I am very lucky. <coughs> I four leaf clovers all the time. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say? when you arrive at the pearly gates. <coughs> the open bars over there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <clears throat> Let's see, I think James Lipton <clears throat> has now got a huge frog in his throat. <clears> throat> Why don't I leave the rest of the questions to the audience? <coughs> Does anybody have a question? Oh, you did. I'm going to turn the mic off. Jeez. I have two, actually. One, what would you say for future aspiring writers um, of any genre? And two, when did you come out? I'm quite curious on that one. Um, First question I came, well, second question first, I came out when I was 18, uh, my first year of college. Um, although, of course, it was one of those looking back, uh, it was like, duh, I've always been so gay. Um, <laughs> and, and advice to uh, aspiring writers, I, I always say, first of all, if you've ever written anything down, you're not an aspiring writer, you're a writer. Start there by calling yourself a writer. And second, <coughs> by, to me, just to keep to just always be writing, you know, to not get stuck on, I can't figure this thing out, write something else. Just like make it part of your daily practice um, and don't, don't, um, don't get stuck. I, I spent a lot of my early career years, I would just get really stuck and I would get really frustrated and then it just nothing would happen. And so to me, it's just, just write. As a friend of mine says, who's also a screenwriter, when he gets stuck, he says, he says, this is what I say out loud, I'm gonna write the worst scene ever written. And then he just writes it and, it, and he said, and then, you know, and then you rewrite it and it sucks, but it's, you've made progress. So that, that is a lesson that I take with me always. I, I've said that out loud many times, just to get myself through the hurdle. Let's not go through hurdles, over the hurdle. Sorry, I have a cold, I'm really sniffly. Um, <coughs> my question is, like, what's it like to film a sex scene? Is that like really awkward? That you're with it this is person. so awkward. You're not actually like. <laughs> it is the worst. It is awkward. <coughs> it is gross. It's embarrassing. It's stressful. I've done it a lot, and it's really. Um, I mean, if you're lucky, the person that you're doing it with is um, someone that you can stand, um, uh, which is I've I've do you know it was really awkward doing a sex scene with someone you hate. That I did that in the movie The Watermelon Woman. Ugh. Just saw a trailer for it. In, it, in which movie? The Watermelon Woman. <laughs> the, the, the sex scene is with the director, and we just hated each other. Um, and really? so I was just like, I can't believe I have to touch you. Uh. <laughs> oh my God, and you were so convincing. I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm an actor. Inside, I was dying. I'm dying inside. When you watch that movie again, just know that I'm dying inside. Um, I am going to watch it again, and I'm going to hear your voice saying, I'm dying I'm inside. inside. And then in Go Fish, uh, my sex scenes were with another different kind of awkward is that she's a really good friend of mine in real life, but not in, in no way are we, were we romantic and sexually involved with each other. So the, we couldn't stop laughing because we were just so weirded out. Oh my God. <laughs> we're like, come on, just do it. And then the, and the director would get mad because we would just burst out laughing because we were trying to be all sexy. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hello, good. I really don't need this. But... <laughs> Um, I am a talk show host and I produce the show and I also act. And you touched on this a little bit and I feel your pain. Uh, women in entertainment, it's about youth. So what is your advice to someone who's just starting out a little bit out of their 20s? <laughs> just a tad. Um, I feel like one way that you know, we can 
fix this sort of problem of aging out of, a pro of um, anyone being interested in us is by writing our own stuff, um, which uh, is something that I, I, I mean, I, I always think to myself, if I was smart, I would write mm -hmm. a movie for women in their 50s to play because there's so many amazing <coughs> actresses mm -hmm. who aren't working nearly as much as they would be just because they're not Meryl Streep. It's like Meryl Streep and everybody else. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't. I, for me, it's just about making the roles yourself. But at, in, in a TV host world, it's a. I don't even know that well. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, but I do write a lot of it too. I didn't want to start putting all my hats out there. But <laughs> you're right about that. We have to make stuff for women our own age. And yeah, that's really it. And then we make the younger women the secondary characters. Yeah. Instead of the other way around. I actually instead of in thirty-year-old films... women playing forty and fifty-year-old women. Yes, yeah. exactly. I, well, actually, in my film Creeps, uh, I, w I initially wrote the part for myself. Mm -hmm. And again, I was like, it, it, it was 10 years ago that I wrote it. And I was sort of like, um, this is a funny story of someone's 31, but not 45. So mm -hmm. I can't really play this part. I'm, it, it, I feel like I'm not a therapist. And <laughs> I'm some, and you're expecting me to cry? Here, go away. No, no. Oh, because I'm sniffling. Oh, okay. Here, go away. Thanks. I once was at a therapist's office, and I was like, this, tish, this box of tissues is really making me feel here, pressure really. to cry. Like, you just want me to pray. Really, out. let me. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> yes, we can stare the, share the stage. Both <laughs> sick. Um, so what does your writing process look like? Um, I have to write um, first thing in the morning. Um, I have to not look at the internet at all. Um, and I try to do that every morning for at least a half an hour, even though it doesn't sound like a lot. To do that, the first thing before you have a conversation, before you get engaged with the world, it's really the only way that it works for me. And I live alone, and I, you know, I don't have the TV on, I don't, I can't, think with music on. Um, so it's just all super quiet and, and um, about, to me it's sort of like being as close to your subconscious as you can be and still be awake. Because you know, if, if, cause you're still sort of, if you haven't spoken, you're still sort of living partially in your dream. And I feel like that's a really good space to be creative from. Um, but mostly I just don't write at all and hate myself. My, it's very so, it's very torturous my process because I'll go for a whole week and not have written anything and then I'll just feel like I call myself a writer I haven't written a single thing down but as my friend Don Roos so my friend Don Roos who's also a screenwriter who wrote Single White Female and um, uh, Happy Endings and a whole bunch of great movies uh, he's also a director he said that he he will force himself he will put a timer on um, for an hour and force himself to write for that hour even if. <laughs> Even if all he's writing is, I'm so fat, I can't believe I'm so fat, I hate my boyfriend. He said, but at least he's written something. He's like, and then for the rest of the day, I'm a writer because I've written something. I think that's also an interesting. It's interesting, I, I, I do a workshop in um, LA uh, with screenwriters that I've been doing for about 10 years. And so I've heard a lot of writers talk about their process. And it's interesting how different it is for everybody. I think the most important thing is for people to figure out what, there is, what makes them the most productive and what works for them. Um, but it is, it's interesting how different it is. Mine is just, I just shame myself into structuring my life around writing. But it takes, but then it, you know, some people, like to me the idea of setting a timer and forcing yourself to write for an hour every day, like Don does, is just psychotic. I know because I tried it, because I'm like, maybe that's what I need. I need, to, I need to really impose structure on myself. And I was like, no, I feel like I'm in prison. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm a big fan of American Psycho, both the book and the movie, um, but I, as an ardent feminist, I really struggled with the book, and I was wondering if you could talk, you mentioned it, you touched on it, but if you could talk a little bit about how you kind of dealt with those issues that Brad Easton Ellis had that weren't so obvious in the movie. It's so interesting, because Brett, no one was more surprised than Brett that, people, that women feminists were, um, spoke out against his book. He thought he was writing a feminist book. He really did. And he was just like, what? You're mad? But don't you get it? I'm making fun of men. And he was, but he just took it to such a gruesome place that I think, I think it was just, he was trying to make a point, but I think he went, he went so far to make the point that it was, it just became the thing itself. Um, and so we thought, what we really felt like, it's also, I, I think, a tribute to Christian's performance um, because 
he really, Patrick Bateman is such a dork that you can't possibly be celebrating who this guy is. And when, when guys say to me like, dude, you wrote American Psycho, that's so cool, I'm totally Patrick Bateman. I'm like, you're A, a serial killer, but B, more importantly, you don't, really don't get the movie because he's a dork, he's not a cool guy. He's a wannabe like, guy that nobody can tell apart from anybody else. Um, and so we actually just wanted to, our, our plan was dial down the violence significantly and dial up the, um, the satirical aspect of it, the, the humor in it. That's hu about how men compete with each other uh, in this sort of consumerist kind of hyper real world. Um, but we still, you know, there's, I'm, there's still legions of women who probably think that we're misogynist sellout hookers but we know we're not. <laughs> Do you have water, Jeff? Yeah, I think this young man had a question. I don't know. Hi, um, I'm a theater major here. Um, <clears throat> about to graduate us uh, very soon. I just realized that I want to do films. I wanted to know how, what is the starting process of trying to become an actress with film? Because I'm coming from the theater world, so it's a little oh, bit different. It's, it's, I mean, it's a, but like, like any job, it's kind of a, the catch-22 of you have, you, you have to prove that you can do it. I think the number one thing is to, um, is to get, find yourself find a way to get yourself on camera because what people are looking at, even an agent, is just what you look like on camera, how you are on camera, can you do the thing? Um, and so to me, you know, I mean, it's, my path is so weird that I can't really, and, and the world is so different from when I started, but I, I, I'm only an actress because I decided to be in the movies because I knew that I would, it was gonna take a long time and be hard and that I wouldn't quit. That's the only reason I'm in that movie, and that started a whole acting career. So I don't know, but I think I think the internet will help you. Okay, <laughs> you know you. what I mean? If you, because now you can you can get together with your friends yeah. and shoot something that really showcases your skills and put it on the internet and, and share it with people and use it to get an agent. Okay, that's great, the that's what. It, and I read your book. book, The American Psycho. Great book. I didn't Great. write it. Oh, you didn't write it? No, okay. I wrote the I was trying play. to understand. Like, I, I read it, some of it like a while ago. I thought you were saying you were the writer. I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I, wrote, I adapted it to the screen, which is a whole other okay, interesting and challenging okay. process. Right. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Hi. 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 Hi.
you can't even make generalizations because it changes so quickly. Like every six months, it feels like there's a new sort of dynamic or something to pay attention to, which is very daunting as a person who makes stuff because you're sort of never sure. I mean, it's like I was going to make a feature film, and I'm like, actually, TV is what's really exciting right now, and it and and feels. But it's not even TV. It's channels on the internet, which is a concept that if you tried to explain it to me 10 years ago, I would have been like, wait, what? I mean, you're looking at someone who, somebody, <laughs> my sister, not this, this one, a different one, um, got a TiVo, this is like 10 years ago, and she, she, I, she's showing it to me, and I was like, I don't understand, are we traveling through time? How can you freeze a commercial? Like, to, you know how long it took someone to explain the internet to me? I'm very slow, so I get really panicky when I think about the answer to your question, which is that it's all changing so quickly. It's hard to really know. It's hard to stay on top of, the, of what's what the the real dynamic of the moment is because it feels like it's different all the time. Thank you. Um, as a writer and as a as a general artist, do you do you find yourself coming back to like essential foundation of inspiration, like? some kind of art that you, you've seen as a child or, you know, whether it was a film, a poem, a book, or anything that kind of like guides like your art and just kind of, not so much as a hue to like what you write, but to kind of, I guess, inspire you. I, wanted, I don't want to sound too like, you know, a crazy philosopher. <laughs> philosoph um, so is the question what inspires me or what influences me? As like both. Both. Um, I, I read a lot of short fiction. There's, a, there's several um, anthologies that, are, that come out once a year. Um, and I get very inspired by those. In fact, I just straight up steal things from them. Um, I always feel like that's an OK thing to do. Same with the podcast that I listen to. Um, it's just being like, well, that's an interesting story. What if it was this? What if it was that? What if it was this? Um, and uh, I think my, I mean, just my goal is always, I, no matter what it is, I always come back to comedy, um, to dark, things that are funny but kind of dark, like not funny to everyone. Like only certain people will laugh. Or like, or sitting in a screening when American Psycho was out um, and having people laughing and then all of a sudden be like, whoa, what am I laughing at? Whoa, this is, I love just messing with people like that. You know, where you're like, oh man, I'm laughing about a serial killer. Is, is this cool? Um, or like, you know, the, there's this film called Happiness that Todd Salons, Salons directed. And he manages to make you sympathetic to a pedophile. And I'm always I'm fascinated by that, like, like how you can manipulate your audience to, um, to, to take them places where they're sympathetic with people they never thought they'd be sympathetic with. So all of that inspires me. Uh, and that, that's usually my goal. I, and I realized recently, I don't really know. I, I never, I've never written anything that didn't, wasn't funny in some way. Even when I'm not happy, I'm still funny. I mean, I still use humor to, to express ideas. So, that's sort of a big, messy answer. <laughs> is there any actor or actress that you would really <coughs> like to work with? Yes. I really want Owen Wilson to play a butch lesbian in a movie. <laughs> I love Owen Wilson. I'm obsessed with him. And I'm, I, I keep thinking, like, oh, I've got to find a part for him. And I'm like, I should make him play a lesbian. No one's ever, how, how are we this far along? in gay and lesbian representation, and no one's ever had a man play a lesbian. It's an interesting, interesting thing. Like, I wonder if it would piss people off, or if it, if it would just be cool. Don't you think that's a cool idea? Well, in the L word, there was the, what was the guy's name, Lisa? Or was yeah, that oh yeah. yeah. But that he, was, that yeah. Was weird, that was just weird. <laughs> that was my idea. <laughs> but it been, but it somebody told me about a guy, a biological man, a uh, young man who wanted to go to the Michigan Women's Music Festival, which is an all women, all female thing that only women can go to, and that he was that he was he had changed his name to Lisa, and that he was really saying I am a I am a woman though he was he was not trans he was not transgendered identified trans identified, um, and I just thought that was such a hilarious thing and also just a hilarious name to pick, Lisa of all the names you could pick, it's just such a it's such a simple name like you'd think you'd be Calpurnia or you know. So I think fancy and, and, and Angelina. elaborate. Or Angelina. Angelina. First, I just want to say thanks so much for uh, coming here. And uh, I think it's kind of cool that your sister and your roots are from Dover, Pat Kong and everything. And it's always kind of like a little sting of Jersey pride when we hear somebody making it on the West Coast and like, you know, coming from here. But uh, as a writer, um, I'm working with a friend and uh, she's a 32-year vet in the military, an Army nurse, and we're working on a project 
that we were very close to trying to pitch to HBO, and I was just at HBO last night at a private screen. I feel like we're, we're close, we're like very close to that world, but it's very hard to break in. And also, as a co-writer, like, there's just, it's funny, when you were talking about Creeps, how you thought it, maybe you could branch off and make it into an episodic or, mm -hmm. you know, for TV. I, I feel so strongly that this project we're working on is well placed in TV and lends to that much, much easier than it does to a feature, and we're kind of opposed on this. And I feel like for, like, HBO original programming or anything, I would probably get that. So what do you do when you're... Uh, looking at a project, and you've, I guess, originally conceived as Creeps as a feature, and then you're kind of rethinking of it as an episodic. Um, one is, as you're trying to pitch the idea or, or craft it, um, how drastically does that change the project? And then two, um, how do you, how, or for you, or for friends, you know, how were you able to break into that kind of uh, world without really an agent or representation? Um, um. That I I just made a movie and and it was successful and that, I mean I, my path is so weird and unique um, and you know and from that ended up getting a manager and an agent and all of that and now I mean it's really tricky because an amazing script can sit in a pile of of scripts for weeks in people's offices if you ever go into any manager agent um, production company office you know there's just so many scripts that that don't necessarily ever get read except for the first couple pages. Um, and I, I don't know, sometimes I, I could just tell people that they should try to make, shoot a couple scenes of it so that you have something that's really concretely, this is the tone, this is the style. Um, but the short answer is, it's hard. <laughs> and to me, the, the difference between, you know, knowing whether or not it could be TV is just, can you, can you imagine season three? That's how I usually think about it. And if you can't imagine season three, then it's probably not a TV show, it's a movie. Hi, how are you? Um, so in the same breath of talking about humor, what's it like working with Kevin Smith? And of those experiences, if anything, did you take away and that, that um, changed your approach in the way you write, direct, act from those experiences? You mean, has Kevin influenced me? <laughs> He's my good friend. Um, um, working with Kevin is fun. He's a very uh, fun, easygoing director uh, on his sets, and, and the tone of the sets is usually, every, is, is jolly and he doesn't stress. Um, he talks a lot though, and he, uh, you know, well, he makes it his business to see how inappropriate of a question he can ask me, which is a fun <laughs> game that we play because he just wants me to go, oh, how could you ask that? But I just answer him, and then he's like, <gasps> <coughs> All right, really silly question um, for the L word. Did you work with Kate Monig, like the one who played Shane at all, or not? Like, of course, yeah. Is she, is she I worked nice? with Kate. Um, is she nice? Is all she of like the really actors, like... all, for writers on that show, all of the actors were always taking us out to drinks because they weren't allowed to know what was going to be in the next episode. And so they would try to just, you know, come on, like, what happens to my character? And Kate, in particular, she, she um, was really by the end of season one, she was really sick of making out with um, strangers, because in her, every episode, it would just be, uh, she would have a new chick, and she's like, she'd be like, I think Shane should fall in love. And we're like, you're just sick of making out with Canadian extras. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was, uh, yeah, I worked with Kate. I mean, we're, you know, it's all like one um, messy, happy L word family. So yeah, I spent a lot of time with her. She's a lovely person. And she wasn't, she, interestingly, she wasn't really out for the first season of The L Word. She wasn't out in the press. She just didn't answer about her sexuality. But then, yeah, but then, I, then she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, duh, I'm gay. <laughs> Hi, uh, you were talking about that you were really good at comedy while it also being dark, and also that you listened to podcasts. And uh, I just wanted to recommend one. Uh, it's called Welcome to Night Vale, and it's a gay relationship, and they're, it's just really dark and funny, and it's that kind of thing where is it, it's a It's to, a narrative? It's a fiction story that's like, yeah, a, oh, a podcast. Interesting. I always, and, see, I've never listened to those. I always listen to people actually telling real stories of real things that yeah, happen to them. Yeah, yeah. So. What's it called? Welcome to Night Vale? Welcome to Night Vale, yeah. I'll check it out. Okay. Um, 
I was curious when you were talking about the sex scene with uh, Christian Bale and the thing. How was that like being a lesbian having a sex scene with a man and another woman? I think I've never seen the movie, so. Oh, um, it it's all. It doesn't really your 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 sexual orientation is pretty irrelevant because it's awkward no matter what. You know, you might as well be doing it with a man or a woman you don't know or would never have sex with in real life. I mean, it's just all, it doesn't make, it really doesn't make any difference to me. And, but Christian is such a uh, super, super professional and um, he made it, uh, he made it pretty easy uh, and, not, and not too awkward. Um, I wonder if it made him feel awkward that I was a lesbian. <laughs> I have to ask him. <laughs> Hi, I know you said you came out when you were 18. Was it difficult coming out? And do you have like an interesting coming out story? And also, do you have any advice to people trying to come out today? Um, I'm kind of lucky. I think my parents are just kind of surprised that I'm actually alive. And so to them, they were like, yeah, all right, sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's not that interesting of a story, really. I was just like, huh, I'm gay, all right. Um, and it wasn't, I mean, I'm sort of glad that I didn't realize it younger because it was, would have been harder if I was in high school, but I was at Sarah Lawrence College where people were, people who weren't even gay were gay, just to be gay for a while. Um, I don't know, do people still have to come out? I mean, do I just live in a gay bubble? It just feels like, like everybody's gay and nobody cares, but am I wrong? Oh, I lost perspective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any advice. Sorry, Sorry, stealing another question right here. Yeah, but uh, I had wondered earlier when you were talking about the courtroom scene that um, as a triple threat that you are, writer, uh, filmmaker, and actress, Can't why you that. wouldn't write the scene yourself or write the part that you think that would be the killer part for you? I'm thinking about it. I did, my movie Creeps was supposed to be a killer part for me, but then I got too old. But, um, but that is my next project. Um, is to is to write a really cool role for myself because I don't get to act as much as I would, as much as I'd like to. I mean, it's it's really so fun. I absolutely love being in production and being on a set. I find it, it's kind of like being in high school. Like there's dramas and intrigue and everybody's you know has their you know you, you get to see people in crisis, how people are under pressure, and it's really fun. So it's a good idea. I'm going to do that. <laughs> Big question. I just, I mean, I, I'm sort of an omnivore when it comes to movies and TV. I just, I try to watch every, as much as I possibly can, which is really fun when you're on a plane and you have TV and I've just watched like, ooh, I'm gonna force myself to watch Everybody Loves Raymond. Um, I don't love Raymond, but I'm, a lot of people do because it's a really popular show. Um, so I, I, I'm, I think just everything, like every single thing you can possibly watch. I really, I, I mentioned uh, Todd Salons earlier. Uh, he's a filmmaker that I absolutely love. Uh, his movies are, make you so uncomfortable, and some of them are so weird, but they're but they're really uh, you know cool and thought provoking. Um, what did I just see? Oh my God, I get really um, spacey about titles. But anyway, um, I just watch everything. That's the short answer. <coughs> well, you know what? Since I have the mic, I'm going to ask a question. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm curious, you had said earlier how the divisions really have faded over the you know, last 10, 15 years. Uh, but when you write, do you write that, that lesbian consciousness that's been such a part of um, you know, what you write? Do you write with a lesbian audience in mind or do you think about how a lesbian community would receive this? Or has your audience kind of um, become more broad as sort of those divisions die? It's funny because with Go Fish, we were so specifically saying, this is a movie for lesbians, made by lesbians. We don't care who else sees it. This is, this is our goal. But now, I've sort of gone to the opposite extreme. I mean, I'm really lucky that I got the opportunity to write American Psycho because there's nothing lesbian about it. And it sort of proved to the world that that's not my only voice and that's not my only um, ax to grind, agenda, whatever. Um, so now I just try 
really hard to not hear anyone's voice and not care who sees it and just try to do something that's, that's good and true to the human experience. Um, so it's, you know, a radical, it's, it's radically changed over the years. Um, and I feel like no matter what you do, I know from experience that no matter what you do for lesbians, some of them are going to be mad at you anyway. <laughs> Um, in all your writing, have you ever considered writing a part for a sexuality that normally isn't featured as much, like pansexual or like heterofluid or homofluid? Have you ever thought of writing a part like really showing the journey of somebody who identifies as that? Um, those are all new things. That, I mean, those are new, new ways that people are thinking and talking about sexuality. I mean, I have, I have a, a few trans characters in my movie right now. Um, but not so much with the, it's, it's a generational thing, I think. I don't, know, I don't know a lot of people who use those kinds of terms who are my age. It's all people you know, who are in their 20s and younger. So um, no, because I don't really know that much about it, to be honest. I know a lot about trans, but not about the, this whole, this sort of new trans asterisk, you know, all that, you know, flu, the, just flu, it's just about fluidity. It's, it's definitely a young people thing. I mean, I'm sure there's some people my age, but mostly it's a, it's a, it's a conversation that happens in a different generation. Okay, one last question. I read that you had to, uh, for one, I don't remember which script, but one of the scripts, only, the director only used about 25% <laughs> of what you wrote. Is it hard to have you, basically your baby um, and you have to give up control like to a certain extent? Is that challenging? Was that hard for you to get over? Um, well, that particular script uh, is called Blood Rain, and it's possibly the worst movie ever made. Um, and the director was already, he's notoriously off his rocker. And when I sat in the theater at the premiere and watched it, I, I was like laughing out loud, and it's not a comedy. Um, <laughs> because it's so outrageous what he did. Um, I just had to, I'm, I've been so lucky with almost all the other, with all the other projects that I've done where I've, my voice is very much there and what I've written on the page is what ends up on the screen and, and that's, you know, I think the exception rather than the rule for the average writer who works in Hollywood. Um, so that, so I just had, I just had to have a sense of humor about it. I mean, the, that director, his name is Uva Bull, he hounded me. I did not want to write that script. I was just like, oh, it's a vampire, just based on a video game, like, yawn, who cares? Um, uh, but he was so, 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 so insistent, so I was like, you know, let me just give this a shot. And I was already working on the L word, so I was super busy. Um, so I, ha I had to write the script in like a week. Um, and he, he did something that has never happened to me before, and that's not how it usually happens, which is he said, great, we love it, we're going into production tomorrow. And which meant no new drafts, no, no back and forth with notes. I mean, when you do a script, usually it's like months and months of back and forth, back and forth with notes from different executives and from the director and sometimes actors and la la la. So um, I was, the whole experience was so weird and foreign and shocking to me that I just laughed. And then I got a Razzie. Do you know what the Razzies? It's like, you know, for the worst, thing, worst things in movies ever. My script got a Razzie, I was pretty proud of that. When I do something shitty, I do something real shitty. <laughs> but it actually wasn't me. He just rewrote it, and the actors rewrote it. He wrote an entire part for Billy Zane, because Billy Zane happened to be in Romania and wanted to be in the movie, so he wrote this nonsense part for an, act an actor that makes no sense in the plot, and it's just weird, and everybody's wearing weird wigs. It's just a hilarious movie. I think it, <coughs> I, I talk a lot about that in, um, there's a documentary called Tales from the Script, the way they interviewed me, and I, I, I speak very openly about Mr. Bull and his ways. If you're interested, it's actually a really interesting documentary, especially if you're uh, a screenwriter. Tales from the script, it's called. It's on Netflix, I think. Is that the end? Thank you. Thanks for coming. Are you done with if, me? No, not yet. <laughs> if all of you would please look under your seats. If you see a little black piece of paper, does every seat have a little black piece of paper under it? No, there's about 10. Oh. What if someone's not sitting in the seat that has the thing? I know, that's what I'm wondering right this minute. <laughs> It's like an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> it is kind of. It is. 
There's one. It's like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It sort of is, really. I swear I didn't intend it to be like this. 